Water, it's rather crucial for our survival. And funnily enough, it also makes your vehicles more fun. A bit like this. This is the Yamaha Aerox 155 and it's a performance-oriented scooter with a 155cc single-cylinder engine. But more importantly, it is the first scooter in its segment to come with liquid cooling. And on top of that, it gets four valves, which is one more than most of its competitors. And these two factors, when combined, allow the scooter to rev freely and boy, does it feel fun. Now, allow me to bore you a little with some technical details, but bear with me. The 155cc engine that you see here is actually derived from the R15. And compared to the R15, this scooter makes slightly less power and torque figures. To be precise, it produces a peak power of 14.7 bhp and a peak torque of 13.9 newton meters. But still, it is by far the most powerful scooter in its segment. In fact, it can also rub shoulders with many 150cc motorcycles. I will confess, I'm not a big fan of scooters. I would rather prefer a motorcycle any day. But this one does stand out amongst the crowd of utilitarian scooters that are found abundantly in the market. And maybe that has got to do with the fact that Yamaha has added many touches in the Aerox 155 that make it feel like a motorcycle. First of all, you will notice this spine. Yes, you lose out on some storage space in the floorboard, but you get easy access to the fuel fill lid just like on a motorcycle. So now when you go to the gas station, you don't have to get off the scooter to open the fuel lid. Generally, you find it here on other scooters, but this one has it right in front of you. So that's very easy to use. The Aerox 155 gets telescopic forks at the front and twin springs at the back, just like a motorcycle. Also, the wheels are bigger. You get 14-inch alloy wheels, which is not as big as a bike, but the rear has a wide 140 section tire, which is very much like performance motorcycles. In fact, these tires do make a big difference in how the scooter handles. You get a lot of confidence while riding, no matter what speed you're at. While executing some fancy maneuvers on the scooter, you do not feel like it will tip over and fall. Plus, the long wheelbase lends it extra stability and you can make some really slow speed U-turns without having to keep your foot down. Cruising at triple digit speeds also feels very natural and effortless. Now, despite being the most powerful scooter in its segment, do not expect a burst of air in your face when you quickly twist the accelerator. This is a very smooth and refined scooter and it climbs the speedo in quite a linear fashion. But having said that, it does pack in enough punch to make easy overtake maneuvers in city traffic. In fact, most city roads have a speed limit of 50 kmph and you can cruise at that speed while at about 5,000 RPM. And like I said, the scooter feels very effortless. Even while you go up at about 70 to 80 kmph, the scooter is very relaxed and very composed. It also gets variable valve actuation just like the R15 and it works flawlessly and allows the scooter to perform no matter what speed you're at. Only when you cross the 90 kmph mark does the scooter start to slow down a little in its acceleration and reaching the 100 kmph mark can take a little while. Despite the big and bulky looks of the scooter, it's actually not that heavy and not that difficult to maneuver. It also comes with a decent ground clearance of 145 mm, which is enough for clearing any broken roads or speed breakers. 
And I must also give a special shout out to the automatic start stop system which works brilliantly and you can also turn it off if you want. Now, if I come to some of the things that I did not like about the scooter, well, the first one will have to be the instrument console. Come, let me show you. As you can see, this is a completely digital unit and it displays a good amount of information as well, but I feel that it could have been brighter. Also, it comes with connected features, though they are pretty basic, you get some stats related to the vehicle, but Yamaha could have also added a navigation feature. This rear suspension that we spoke about earlier, well, it's a little too stiff and yes, it's a performance oriented scooter so that helps in, you know, stability and cornering. But if you're going over broken roads or over speed breakers, you will be rattled. So you need to be mindful of that. Also, at the rear, you do not get a disc brake. At the front, you have a disc and ABS, but at the back, you only get a 130mm drum brake. But on the flip side, you get to have a little fun with this. One last niggle I have with the scooter is that it misses out on a parking brake, which can be helpful in certain situations. I won't take too much time talking about how the scooter looks because, quite frankly, it's amazing and it's unique looking and I'm really happy that we are getting more exotic looking scooters in India and I'm hopeful to see what all the future holds for the Indian market. Having said that, I really do like the DRL design and the headlamp design at the front and the apron design also looks very chiseled, very sharp. The graphics all around are great and this one is in the blue color scheme, the signature Yamaha blue color and this is by far my favorite color scheme. What do you think of the way the scooter looks? Please do share your thoughts in the comments down below. The last time I had this much fun riding a scooter was when I rode the Aprilia SR160 a few years back. And now that I say that, I think it would be interesting to see a comparison between the SR160 and the Aerox 155. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you're notified whenever we put that video or any other interesting video on our channel. But coming back to the Aerox 155, I can heartily recommend this to anyone looking for a performance oriented scooter or anyone who wants an absolutely stunning looking product in this segment that looks very unique as well. Talking of the price, it costs 1.32 lakh rupees X showroom and that is a pretty sweet deal when you consider all the features and the performance that it packs. When you compare it to its competitors or even the R15, this is actually a very good deal. If you always wanted the R15 but in a more comfortable and practical package, then this is it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I will take your leave because I really want to have another go at the scooter. Bye-bye. If you are unlucky enough to go over speed breakers or broken roads, then there's a plane that might come and ruin your take. <laughs>